boss fight has left its mark. Here's a look at the Hero Hacks highly articulated character kit system of Zorro Don Diego de la Vega. Don Diego is the son of California's largest landowner, Don Alejandro de la Vega, and was sent to study in Spain as a young man. While residing in Madrid, he learned the art of la verdadera destreza and became an accomplished equestrian. Called back home by his father, he found California to be much changed. Corruption was riff among government officials, military officers enforced tyrannical order, and squeezed taxes and bribes from its peons. Diego, angered by the suffering of the poor, donned a mask and black attire, became a champion of the oppressed. At Zorro, he uses his skill with a blade, acrobatic abilities, and strategic mind to confound his foes. Before we get a closer look at Zorro, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. Most of these Vitruvian hacks tend to be about a three and three quarter inch to about a four inch tall height. I'm going to take the tape measure right to the very top of his head, and I'm going to stop it right there, revealing in fact that Zorro is 4.2 inches in height. We can switch that to the centimeters, revealing that the figure is 10.8, so a little over 10 and a half centimeters tall. I'd like to thank the folks over at Boss Fight Studios that provided this sample of Zorro that we could have a look at in this review. Just a correction, though, he actually isn't part of the Vitruvian hacks. He's part of the Hero Hacks line, a subcategory to the smaller 3 and 3 quarter inch or 4 inch tall figures that they're putting out. For some comparisons, we can move over Zorro and bring in one of the Vitruvian hacks we just had a look at. Here he is next to Officer Zed. Though you probably would never see the two of them inhabit the same universe. It kind of gives you a good idea, though, of how the figures are about the same size to one another and fit in perfectly in a collection. Starting this review out first, we'll have a look at the display stand that comes included with Zorro. Further elaborating the idea that these are actually part of the Hero Hacks line, still part of the highly articulated character kit system. Unlike Officer Zed that we looked at before, Zoro gets granted with a couple of additional pegs, two more than the ones we looked at before. I really like the look of this 3D display stand. And I can only imagine the types of characters that they could churn out for a 3 and 3 quarter inch or 4 inch tall line under the Hero Hacks banner. That's a nice looking display stand. We'll put that down for the time being. He also comes included with a couple of accessories, things that you would expect to find with Zoro, one of which being a sword. The sword not only has been sculpted so nicely, but painted very nicely in this metallic silver. The only part that doesn't get the silver is, of course, the handle that's blocked off by the guard. This does fit into his hand, and while you are putting it in his hand, just be mindful of the guard that fits around the, the handle. When you are putting it in his hand, for example, you sort of want to kind of get your hand in there, his hand, I suppose, in there, and just push that against it. But again, being careful of the more smaller bit of plastic that wraps around on that guard. Fans of Zor will probably also recognize this, his trusty whip. The whip has all been molded here in black plastic and has a little bit of pliability to it. It doesn't have a wire frame necessarily, but certainly is a nice looking whip. And I like the fact that they gave some shape to it as opposed to just making a straight looking whip. And again, that fits in his hand the exact same way. Go ahead and pick up the figure. It probably will be a bit strange probably to display him with both accessories in his hand. I think if the push came to shove and I had to choose only one, I probably would go with the whip. I just think of Zoro more with a whip than anything else. I loved Zoro growing up, something I'll probably talk a little bit more about when we look at this figure right after I pry his fingers away from his palm and I fit his whip into his hand. Again, you're probably not going to want to display him with both the accessories, but I just want to show you though that the hands currently in the sockets of his forearm are more than enough to adopt both accessories if you want to display them with the figure. Mind you, though, he does come with a couple of other hands as well. We'll just put this figure down here for a second. I'm resisting the urge for the time being to con continually pick up the figure because I just really want to play with it. He does also come with a couple of gestured hands. Now, this is good, really, if you want to choose for yourself one of the accessories, pass on the other, and then decide for yourself to swap the other hand out with one, like I said, that has more of a gestured pose. I think ultimately I'm probably going to decide, like I said, to display him with the whip, and then the other hand will be one of these hands right here. And those just plug in via just the peg. Same peg system that we looked at with when we looked at Officer Zed. 
Okay, we'll put that to the side. He, of course, comes in clue with a hat. Zor would be a little bit barren, I think, without a hat. He does come in clue with his hat, and it has some nice silver accents there on the side. The hat, the way that they've designed it, there's these little lips on the inside. It sort of helps to keep the hat in place. Just plunk it down on his head, just like that. And you can have the hat on his head like that. I think I actually got it the wrong way. Let's just flip it around. Yeah, this was the right side. So just get that into his place, onto his head like that. And now you got a more finished looking Zoro, if you ask me. To take this look one step further, we can go ahead and remove the hat. And we can actually, you know what, just before we remove the head, I also want to show you, he does also have an unmasked portrait as well. And all that's involved in this case is actually just to pop the head off. I commended them the last time we looked at the Officer Z. I certainly want to reinstate that in this review. I do appreciate the fact that they include peg holes, but pegs, I should say, but actually on each of the heads. So you don't have to worry about trying to fish those out every single time. Again, just take the head that's unmasked, pop it back onto the neck, and you've got your, yourself an unmasked portrait of Don Diego. It'd be a bit strange, of course, to display the figure like Zorro without the mask. So even though, again, I appreciate the fact and some really nice detailing done to that face. Put in perspective, really, how small these figures are. I mean, like putting my thumb next to a figure, not that that's the greatest gauge, but gives you really a good idea of how small these figures are and how incredible the amount of paint is that they apply to such a small looking canvas. Just before I go ahead and put Zorro's head back in place, one thing I also wanted to show you with a decapitated body is that you can actually remove the cape as well. You just lift the cape up and similar to a, say, a G.I. Joe, it's plugged into the back of his torso. So you just lift this up, free it from its hole, and you can take that off entirely if you want to. And I guess for that, it probably makes a little bit more than sense to display with the Don Diego de la Vega head sculpt instead. It's fully finished on the outside there as well. All the places that normally would then be covered by the cape, sculpted just as nicely as the cape itself. One last thing I certainly also want to show you guys as well is on the back of his belt, you'll see that there is a little loop. You can then take the sword and slide it into the holster just like that. You really wouldn't be able to use it for the whip, something just because the whip would be too long. But it's a good place to store the sword until you decide to put it into his hand. Getting Don Diego, though, donning the mask again while we look at the rest of the figure. Again, a real stellar job on that head sculpt. Not only the skin tone, but the coloring that they use for both the mask and the, the mustache very cleanly applied. Keeping in mind how small this figure actually is. Zorro was someone I grew up with, loving the movies, and I even watched that Zorro and Son, a very short-lived series that aired in the 80s. Again, Zorro was a childhood hero of mine. I think that boss fight has done a great job on the figure itself. The sculpting of the cape, for example. I mean, really, when you're looking at a character like this, there is so much black. So really, paint is not something that can help and aid the figure. A lot of it relies on the sculpt. So you have draped fabric, where fabric on a sleeve, for example, would naturally fall. The same can be applied, for example, the torso and like the little sashed belt that he has as well. Again, it's a lot of black. And in a case like this, I think they probably have just molded this in black plastic instead of actually going in there and painting it. One thing that good, one thing that works in its favor is because they use so much black plastic than rather having to paint it, it doesn't have any issues then with caked up joints. Not that I really had an issue with Officer Z to start off with, but I feel like Zorro's joints are just a little easier to move right out the package. Just again, some really stellar looking sculpting here. The only thing I would say as a talking point, not a negative necessarily, is at the bottom of the cape, this section here more so on this side, it's a little more, it's a tighter, it's a more sturdier looking plastic, but it seems to be a little sharp, a little pointed on the bottom here. Not that I have drawn blood or scraped myself, but I certainly notice it when I'm moving his leg back and forth, for example. He does have, of course, peg holes on the undersides of his feet. That would certainly make some sense, since we already had a look at the display stand that comes included with the figure. Let's get a closer look at the articulation for Zorro. I'm going to try to keep his hat on, because after all, I just think of Zorro with his hat on more so than anything else. His head moves back and forth because it is on a ball joint. It does move down. Oh, I really like the look of that, where you can barely see his eyes. 
moves up and you can move it back and forth as well. As for his arms, his arms go, like with Officer Zed, at a very comfortable 90 degree angles, 90, degree, 90 degrees on both sides. You can move the arms forward and back. He does have a bend in the elbow, just a single bend, just a single hinge, but you can also rotate that forearm as well, as well as rotate the hands. For his, his upper torso is on a ball joint. It's a little more limited just because, of course, the nature of the cape being so flushed against his body. Of course, it becomes a little bit more problematic when it comes to trying to rotate his body because, again, that cape is so close. The legs split out. You can also move the cape, the legs back and forth. They rotate at the top, basically where they connect to that ball peg. You can double bend at the knees. He doesn't have necessarily articulation here in the boot. The boot is just a continuation of the same mold. Although the, it looks like this might have been the one place where they would have painted that black instead of just relying on the coloring of the plastic. The boot seems like it's slightly darker. The ankles move back and forth this way as well, and you can also ankle pivot them too. So it basically has all the articulation you would normally find in a larger scale figure, compact and super detailed in a three and three quarter inch style. I really liked the Officer Zed simply just because I'm a big zombie fan, but I, as a child, childhood fan of Zorro, this might be my favorite of the two ones that Boss Fight sent my way. Now, if you grew up with Zorro like I grew up with Zorro, you're probably hoping at some point that Boss Fight Studios could also release Zorro with his horse. Because after all, Zorro rode around on a horse. Good news, though, is that part of the Hero Hacks line that Boss Fight Studios are putting out they're also putting out a deluxe set that has Zoro with his trusty steed, Tornado. Another one that we're going to be looking at in an upcoming review. I really think that Don Diego de la Vega turned out fantastic. I'm not just saying, maybe I am saying it a little bit because I'm biased towards the character of Zoro. If what they've done here in a three and three quarter inch scale Zoro could be something that they could also transplant over to other characters of a three and three quarter inch scale, Perhaps even ones that come in clue with horses, like, oh, I don't know, the Lone Ranger would be also a childhood hero of mine. I'd love to see Boss Fight Studios approach, if it's something that they haven't already thought of. Zoro has a lot of accessories going for him, and because he does have the holster on the side of his leg for his sword, it means that you can always keep all the accessories on the figure except for, really, the Don Diego head sculpt, which is the alternate head sculpt, and, of course, a couple of hands, but all the rest of the accessories, including the display stand, are all conveniently attached to the figure in one way, shape, or form, perfect for the way that you want to display the figure for yourself. I also like the fact also that his hat stays on. Something I thought would be a problem, but I guess with those little latches they put on either side of the inside of his rim, it means it sits on his head quite securely that you don't have to worry about it falling off. The figure is super articulated, super detailed, and maybe not have as much paint as, say, Officer Zed, and that's the only one we can compare it to right now. But I think where he doesn't have as much paint, he certainly makes up for it in sculpt. And again, I'm super excited to open up the Zorro and Tornado, a review that will be coming up shortly. A big thank you again to the folks over at Boss Fight who provided the sample of the Hero Hacks Zorro, Don Diego de la Vega, that we could have a look at in this review. Think of, for yourself, other childhood heroes that perhaps you grew up watching as a kid that you would love to see Boss Fight Studios release as part of their Hero Hacks. Let me know down below in the comment section. The one I'm thinking of, though, like I said already, Lone Ranger, I think would be fun. Probably didn't have to do too much to the existing tornado mold that they already have. But to release a three and three quarter inch uh, Lone Ranger and Tonto, I think would be fantastic, especially in this scale. Uh, also, if you guys are new to this channel and enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on. And that, yes, you're coming back to this channel because, like I said, we will be looking at more hero hacks, including the Zorro with Tornado. Again, really excited to get that one open up. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.